The concept of a seal is fairly simple. We want to bring together two surfaces in such a way that they do not leak. The method by which we achieve this seal is different based on the application. Uh, the first kind of seal we'll look at uses tapered threads. This is a, an NPT fitting. These are commonly seen in air compressors, air compressor lines, air compressor fittings, though they're also used for, for water sometimes. In this type of seal, the actual seal is formed by the threads themselves. These threads actually taper as you get towards the end, so that as this fitting is tightened down, the space available between the threads slowly decreases, so that by the time you get to the end, there's no space left, and the entire volume of the thread is filled. Normally, these are not used by themselves. You would tape these threads with something like a Teflon tape, and the Teflon serves a couple functions. It will decrease the friction on the threads, allowing you to drive the fitting down more without the threads galling or being fouled. Sometimes Teflon tape's not used. Instead, a resin material will be applied to the threads. This actually is a fitting that came from a vacuum pump. On the ends, or inside these threads, you can still see the residue of the resin. The resin would be applied to the threads, it would be driven down, then the resin would cure and fill any remaining voids in between the threads, thereby giving you a good seal. Another kind of seal is achieved with flares. This is actually that same fitting, but now we're going to look at a different part. This part of the fitting has a flared tip. In this case, the seal is not achieved by the threads. The threads provide no seal whatsoever. But this tapered surface is mated with another uh, match tapered surface from the other fitting that would attach to this. The threads allow compressive force to be developed so that when you tighten this down, this flare is being pushed more tightly against the matching flare on the other fitting, uh, thereby creating a seal. So with this and our previous tapered thread seal, the actual uh, parts themselves are sealing to each other. There's no uh, intermediary. For our last type of seal that we'll be talking about, we have a gasket seal. This is just a hose that you would hook up your washing machine with for the hot or cold water supply. With these types of hoses, you have a gasket. And this is a very, very popular kind of seal. We have two surfaces that we would like to mate together, the inside of this hose and the faucet that we're actually attaching this to. But in this case, the threads on this fitting do not supply any sealing. They supply a compressive force, but unlike our flared fitting, the compressive force is not used to shove the actual surfaces together, though they will come together. What we're actually trying to do is compress the gasket. So as you tighten the fitting, this gasket is squeezed. Specifically, it's squeezed and deformed in such a way that the voids between our two mating surfaces are filled. There are several important things to note about gaskets. If the gasket is worn defective or otherwise has failed, no amount of tightening of this fitting is actually going to help you. In addition, there's a couple other problems to be aware of when dealing with gaskets. First off is losing the gasket. In the case of these hoses, they're pretty well retained inside. You have to dig them out to really get them out. But in other cases, not so much. The oil pan on the bottom of a typical wet sump uh, internal combustion engine uses a gasket. The bottom of the oil pan has a bolt. On this bolt is a gasket. The gasket is what actually keeps the oil from leaking out of your car. Frequently, however, when the bolt is removed, the gasket remains stuck on the oil pan itself. So you would drain the oil, you change the oil in the vehicle, you would come back, you'd put the bolt back in. As long as the gasket has remained fixed on the oil pan, that's fine. If you take the bolt off and the gasket remains stuck to the oil pan, you go, you do some work, you come back, and let's say this gasket has fallen off, you put the bolt back in. Well, now there is no gasket, and the threads of the bolt, unlike these threads on our NPT fitting, the threads on the bolt for the oil pan provide no real seal. 
Without the gasket, you're going to leak oil. So that is a case in which you've lost the gasket and have tightened everything up, but you have no seal. The other problem comes when you have too many gaskets. So if you were working on something and you had a part that was going to be replaced and you take the part and let's say the part comes with a, a washer or I'm sorry, with a, a gasket like this. You take the part off and let us say the gasket does not come with the part. The gasket instead, can I get this back out? Yes. The gasket stays with the part that you're not replacing. So you take your old part, you take it away. You get the new part, you come to install it. The gasket was actually part of the piece that you are replacing. So the new part will come with a gasket. However, your old gasket is still on the other part. When you put these together, you will now have two gaskets instead of just one. Two gaskets is not twice as good. If either gasket fails, the surfaces will leak. In addition, the threads have a certain length of engagement. So when you're tightening it down to deform the gasket to fill the spaces, you're going to have twice as much distance between the mating surfaces as is to be expected. This can cause a tremendous number of problems. Um, I have a pressure reducing valve in the house that when it was previously worked on, there were two gaskets because the people didn't pay attention to the fact that a gasket had stayed on one part, a new gasket came with the new part, and their solution was just to tighten the threads really, really tight. If normal amounts of torque do not provide a seal, then you should immediately take it apart, take the gaskets out, look, verify that you have a gasket, verify you don't have too many gaskets. It's important to know what is actually providing the seal between two mated surfaces, whether it is the threads of the surface themselves, uh, do these surfaces require some additional material, like a Teflon tape, is it a flare on the surface that's providing the seal, or do you have some kind of gasket involved in your seal that, need, that would also need to be checked. Depending on what kind of seal you have will change how you approach the problem, how you search for leaks and try to fix them.